Good morning, friends. Uh, this is the video I promised you that I would share something that the Lord, the Holy Ghost, shared with me this morning. And let me tell you something. If you will develop a conversation with the Holy Spirit, let me tell you, He'll talk to you. When you get over yourself, and you get over thinking, oh, it's freaky for the Holy Ghost to talk to us. Not at all. Friend, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit was telling me things when I was 17, 18 years of age. And I have a dear friend. I told him something the Holy Spirit told me. And you know what he said? I don't believe that. The Holy Spirit is too busy to tell you what he just told you. And I thought about that thing. I said, no. I said to myself, I mean, I didn't argue with him, but I knew that I heard the peaceful voice tell me what he told me, and I shared it with my friend, and he just could not believe that the deity and the power of the Holy Ghost would not waste his time and was too busy to tell me what he told me. And I told my friend, I said, look, I said, well, I know what I heard. So anyway, so from that moment until now, through my whole life, I'm going to tell you this and listen carefully. <laughs> there would be times, oh, I wish I could tell you all the times, all the times. But I'll just tell you one. But please listen to this whole message because I really got something that the Lord told me this morning that I believe if you will listen to it, it will help you today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your life. I believe it will give you peace in the troubled days that we're living in and will give you an inside scoop so to speak about what's going on so please listen to this message i am telling you that so many times not only has the lord shared things with me but he has done things for me where i just had to stop and say lord that was you. There is no way, no way that this happened by chance. You orchestrated this and you made this happen. You made this happen. I'll tell you the biggest time the Lord did something for me <clears throat> was when my second wife left me and my son Right after my mother passed away, I bought a house that I could not afford. Well, I can make the payments, but it is not a house that I would have ever bought for me, my wife, Daniel, and her daughter, Haley. The payments on that thing was almost $2,000 a month. It was about 3,600 square feet, a monster of a house. But it was mainly paid for, or payments was made because of a dog grooming business we had called Puppy Love back in the early 2000s. Like from 2001 to 2008, which is when my mother passed away. Well, my wife then, right when my mother was about to pass away, she quit grooming and right after my mother passed away she left me so that's that was a devastating time in my life um, but anyway that house we had it up for sale for $289,000 and I owed 264,000. 
And the only reason that house was bought was so that our mother, the mother of six children, I'm five out of the six, could move to Valdosta with me and my wife and kids and live with us. And she was in her mid eighties. She passed away when she was uh, 89 or eight, yeah, 80, 89. I believe that's right. Anyway, <laughs> I had people calling me from the bank, want me to send something, a dollar, $10, anything. I said, sir, I barely got money after paying electricity and everything to put food for me and Daniel and my car payment. I mean, every day I just woke up crying, just begging God, you know, just telling God, God, please, you know, deliver me, <laughs> deliver, deliver me. And my brother, Lamar, he was a realtor and he said, Asa, you, you, this house cannot go up on the market till it's ready. So I had to sell, uh, a little piece of land that my daddy gave me before he died it was six acres to, and I sold it to my family for a little over six thousand dollars and I took that last six thousand dollars with my brother's help got that house fixed up painted up I mean it didn't need much but what it needed was was time consuming. I was working and I had to pay some painters and all to do that. Anyway, that house went on the market on a Monday morning and we had a buyer for it Wednesday from Tampa, Florida. They came and looked at it on Friday with the offer. We countered, they countered back, and we closed on it Friday night. That house was on the market for six days. And my brother came by Walmart where I was working for me to sign to accept their, um, their thing. So... At the closing, my, we weren't divorced yet, but anyway, we met up there and we was going to get back $4,000. And the man asked us, do you want me to write a check and you cash it and give your separated wife 2000 or do you want me to write each one of y'all a check I said write each one of us a check make mine for 1800 and make hers for 2200 he said why is that I said well she had told me earlier this is all of us sit down at the <laughs> closing table now I said that she had told me earlier that she needed two tires for her car because they were going bald and uh, she needs those tires because she's driving around her daughter and our son Daniel and Daniel was only like seven or eight at the time so anyway like my brother said in that situation if you can't see God in this you can't see God period because no house at two hundred and sixty-nine thousand dollars or two eighty-nine, it wound up selling for two sixty-nine, and we wound up getting four thousand out of it. He said, "No house at that price can sell in six days unless God's in it, especially when they were all the way down in Tampa and they were moving up to Valdosta because their daughter was going to attend Valdosta State University." God orchestrated that, okay? That, all those prayers, God came through. Now, 
but so many times in my life, little things. But I am telling you all that to make you understand you can have a conversation every day with God. I ain't talking about voices in your head. I'm talking about where you share things with the Holy Ghost. And if you'll be quiet and be faithful, the Holy Ghost will talk to you. But he's not like people that has the gift of gab. You see, when God says something, he don't have to repeat it. He don't have to reset it because he says it perfect the first time. So develop a friendship. You know that song says, What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins increase to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Develop a friendship with Jesus. Yes, he is your greatest friend. To the world, he's their greatest friend. Because he has given his blood to redeem every person that walks this earth. Many will not accept the gift of salvation. Many will not walk in what God offers them. If the richest man on earth came up to you and said, Go down to First National Bank, and there is a title to a mansion at, at an address that they'll give you, and keys to a brand new truck and a brand new car. It's already bought and paid for. Just go get it. And if you live your life, say, I'll go by there one day. It ain't going nowhere. That mansion's still there. That truck's still there. That car's still there. I'll get it one day. It ain't going nowhere. Friend, it's there for your taking, but you've got to act on it. The bank ain't going to come beat you down and make you take the titles and the deed to that property. You have to act on it. And right now, I'm telling you, for every human being that's on this earth and that is being born, the blood of Jesus Christ has been given to redeem them from sin, to forgive them of their sin, to have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But they have to act on it. If they don't act on it, they don't get it. You see, the Bible says he who comes to God must first believe that he is God and that he is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. God ain't going to beat you down to give it to you. God is not a dictator. He is not going to force salvation on you. He's not going to force forgiveness on you. You have to accept his gift of salvation. You have to do something. It's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you time. I mean, that's mainly what it's going to cost you, a little effort and time. Time to get to know your Savior. Time to realize that He loves you. He loves you and died for you before you was even born. People have the audacity to say that there is no God. I'm going to tell you what. When this little time here on earth is over, this little earth living that we're doing right now, 
hundreds and thousands of years into the future when every human that is walking this earth thousands of years into the future gets to see the rest of the story and realize God is God God created you sent a savior for you died for you offered you eternal life offered you a home and eternal bliss and glory and you turned it down why because of a lying demon a lying demon has tricked so many people into refusing salvation into accepting the biggest lie that there is no God that there is no heaven above us nor a hell below us that's a lie it's a lie it's a lie and billions of people believe that lie what is truth God is truth God's truth God's word is truth You ready to end your misery, sleepless nights, and worrying? Give your life up to God. Give your whole life to God. Let God be God in your financial affairs. Let God be God in your marriage. Let God be God in your job. Let God be God in your children and in the way you parent, in the way that you treat your children. Let God be God. And God, being God, will show love, compassion, long-suffering, meekness, kindness, gentleness, self-control, humbleness. Because God's love. Let God be God in you. Let God express His love in you, through you, out of you. And you will see when you walk in God and God walks in you, your life will change because God's in control. All right, that's all my preaching for today. Now, let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me this morning. I was getting ready, and that's the best, some of the best times the Lord talks to me because, you know, I'm just, it's early in the morning, I'm shaving, getting dressed and you know these thoughts come to my mind about you know what's all going on in the world and how China and Russia and Israel and you know our economy is sucks and just everything and I thought man it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. You know, if our if our money ever collapses, you know, it, it ain't going to be good. It's going to be bad. And I'm telling you, the Lord said, that ain't happening. I, and I'm thinking, huh? That ain't happening. <laughs> and right then, he said, You talking about, you talking about a civil war. If the money collapsed here in America and all over the world, it would cause such total destruction. A nuclear war would begin instantly. And I'm thinking, 
you know what? I can see that happening. And see, another thing, when God talks to you, his words create pictures in your mind. And when he told me it's not going to happen, and about the nuclear war, in my mind, his words painted pictures. And I could see all over this world, people having bank accounts that's worthless. And having a worthless bank account would make everybody turn into rioters. No need in going to Walmart or any grocery store and buying food because your means of purchasing is worthless. And you need milk. Well, you're not going to go in there and be civil and grab some milk and some bread and go up to the counter and give them your debit card or your credit card or give them money because it's worthless. Nobody would even go to work. Why go to work today? to work for money when the money's worthless. It would be, I mean, this world would plunge into where there would be just mass chaos. Like, give you an example. I'm driving to work today. Why would I go to work if what I'm working for, which is money, to put gas in this car to pay my house payment is now worthless. This guy right here I just passed in this semi, he expects to get paid when he delivers that shipment of merchandise or whatever he's got in his truck. He'd go park that thing somewhere and call his wife or friend Say, hey, come pick me up. I just parked this car on this, or this truck on the side of the road. People would loot and rob everything on the shelves. And the clerks wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Do you know why? Because there wouldn't be any clerks at Walmart protecting Walmart's merchandise because they're not getting paid. In fact, the Walmart clerks that's got keys to the stores would be in there being the first one to grab the stuff off the shelves. Do you see how if they allowed, they meaning the world governments, if they allowed money to collapse, if they allowed money to collapse, how that would just totally, I mean, it would, it would totally in one day strip this whole world of lawfulness and plunge the whole world into lawlessness. You hear me? In one day, we would go from being a world governed by law and order to a world that would be plunged into a world where there is no law and it truly would become every man for himself. And I saw all that this morning. I said, you know what? I have got to share this. I was listening to Judy Jacobs <laughs> and I thought, Lord, I, I will record this when I get on the interstate 
and I'm telling you, he kept pro prompting, prompting me, do it now, do it now. Do I said, Lord, I want to hear this song. He said, do it now, do it now. And then this thought came to me, you know, you're being disobedient. I said, I sure am. <laughs> I'm being disobedient. God wants me to start sharing it. So I reached over there and I put Judy Jacobs on pause. <clears throat> She's on pause right now. But he wanted me to share this with you. So now what can you take away from this? Quit worrying about money collapsing. It ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. They are not going to allow money to collapse. Why do you think, seriously, why do you think, seriously think of this? How can the government all of a sudden start giving everybody $1,400? How? The government never gave us $5, let alone $1,400. You know why? Because it doesn't matter anymore. Let me tell you the reason why it doesn't matter anymore. They have already decided what they're going to do. There's going to be a global reset. Oh yeah, the debt, the debts, that don't mean nothing anymore. Because you know what? The power that money used to give the world leaders does not give them power anymore. Let me tell you what gives these world leaders power. It's being able to know where you are and to be able to control your ability to buy or sell. The global economy will not be reset until the Antichrist comes on the scene and requires all, both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a mark in their right hand or forehead. When that day comes, the global reset will take place. Our money is not gonna collapse. What's gonna happen is they are gonna move the world into a cashless society. And they're gonna give you the ability with a universal mark, a symbol, the name, and I've already, I know what the 666 is. I've shared that on several, several videos a while back. The 666 is gonna be three sets of six numbers. Set number one is gonna be your date of birth, which my number would be 041862. That's the day this boy was born. And there's only a certain amount of people on this earth that's born that day. The, as, as years go by, less and less and less people was born on 041862. Second set of numbers is your social security number. Now this is what everybody's gonna have. And the last six numbers will be your new universal banking account number. And with those three sets of six digits, will tell who you are in the world. And it is a number of a man, and his number is 666. It is a number of a man. And your number will be 666. We're all gonna be part of 666. Let me tell you something, friend. That barcode right there, 
has got two lines at the beginning, two lines in the middle, and two lines at the end that extend down further than any others of the lines. Everybody has got a UPC, Universal Product Code. And you and I will have a UPC, Universal Person Code. We're all gonna be marked. The same way they can scan that and tell us all about what it costs, they're gonna be able to scan our numbers and tell everything about us in the data bank or data bank, whatever you wanna call it, however you wanna say it. It's gonna be our universal person code, universal people code, whatever. Universal personal code. It's gonna be a UPC. It's gonna be a number. We're gonna be able to be tracked just like that merchandise is tracked. That's the reason why everybody has a phone. They can track you with that phone, but they're gonna do one better than that. They're gonna put a chip in people and that chip is gonna be for one thing mainly to know where you are. Imagine if everybody had a chip and somebody goes missing. You wouldn't spend days, weeks, months looking for somebody that was kidnapped, dead or alive, satellites could track exactly where that person is. I mean within a foot or two of where they are. They got satellites right now that can zoom down so close that they can read the tag on your car. You don't believe it? They had a, a, a person, a woman laying out, I think beside the Statue of Liberty, read the magazine, and they got satellites that can zoom in and read what time her watch said. They got all this stuff in place, guys. And you know what? You, you can quit worried about your money. You can quit worried about your bank account. Because you know what Jesus said? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. You know what that means? God is going to give us every day the bread we need to exist. That's the reason why the children of Israel was not able to gather up and store up manna. It was not for a weekly provision. It was for a daily provision. If they tried to store it up, worms got in it. We don't need old manna. We need daily bread. God feeds us. This is a day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice in and be glad. The Bible says that we have no promise of tomorrow. So if we don't have a promise of tomorrow, why do we need bread for tomorrow? Because we may not be here. God gives us what we need every day. Every day. Because tomorrow ain't here yet. God bless you. I wish I had more time, but I got to end this video and get to work. God bless you. Quit worried about your finances. And just know that God's in control. God bless you.